Hello class, today we're going to talk about cladograms, otherwise known as evolutionary trees. If we just start out, I have a very simple version of an evolutionary tree pictured here. Um, and in the past I'd ask my students, you know, what meaning can you derive from this? Sometimes they say that, you know, man is better than everything else, that's why he's higher up. But there's no reason why we couldn't have drawn this the other way. So it's, this one doesn't really represent up or down. Um, something that uh, hopefully you see is that everything here is related to everything else. This is almost like a family tree. And if we trace back our ancestors, we see that man and chimps have had a common ancestor in the, in the near past. But if we trace, same with dinosaurs and birds. Um, even horses and whales. Now, if we trace even further, further, further back, we see that we everything here, in fact, everything on the planet, is related to a single-celled organism. This is a profound aspect of science that we've discovered, that all life on Earth has DNA. All life on Earth has DNA that's made of the same molecules. And all life on Earth originally came from a one single-celled organism. Now, we don't know how that one organism started. That's one of the great mysteries of biology. We may never know. But what we see from an evolutionary tree, what we see from a cladogram, are the relationships and this idea that everything on Earth, all life, is related. Uh, so our topic is cladograms. The aim here is, are we chimps? This is not the kind of question I usually ask, but I want you to think about it. One of the questions I constantly get from students, they ask me, are you trying to tell me that I'm related to monkeys? Well, we need to clarify that because there's a lot of misconceptions about what this means. And so we're going to talk about this today, but also you're going to do an activity looking at evolutionary trees, even looking at ones of, that include humans and other primates. And I think you'll be able to answer this question adequately by the end. So cladograms or evolutionary trees are representations of how life is connected and related. These are constructed based on fossil evidence or DNA evidence, or any other kind of comparisons. Now, the original ones were made using fossils. So before, when Charles Darwin first started to develop his theory on evolution, uh, we didn't know what DNA was back then. That was the mid-1800s. About 100 years later, we, started, we discovered DNA, and we started to figure that out. One thing that we've discovered is that a lot of the connections, a lot of the cladograms that we've made based on fossil evidence are being confirmed when we look at DNA evidence. So that goes a long way to showing uh, how much we understand about, the world, about uh, this theory of evolution. Uh, this is an example of a cladogram. Uh, this one is showing a timeline on the side. So the most recent is up here. Um, and then this is showing millions of years ago. So this is 30 million years ago, 35 million years ago, 40 million years ago, etc., etc., etc. As you can see, not all the lines make it to the present. So that's something I want you to note. This is an interesting one because this is showing the relationship of modern day dolphins and whales. Um, and if you look, most of these lines don't make it to the end, so these represent extinct species. And if you go further and further back, you'll notice that there are actually dolphin ancestors that have four legs. They used to walk on the land. This is showing us how they actually evolved to become aquatic mammals. And this kind of makes a lot more sense that dolphins' ancestors were originally terrestrial organisms. This makes a lot more sense when you think about it because 
why would it ever make sense to have a an air breathing mammal that lives under the water that doesn't really make sense but maybe these guys were trying to uh they were having trouble finding food on the land so they started swimming out into the water to get food and the ones who were better swimmers were the ones who were surviving and reproducing the most so they were so then over time we have you know a proclivity to have these guys have better fins or stay out in the water longer until eventually they just evolve the ability to stay out of the water completely um some things to note there is a timeline on the side uh, the species at the end are currently alive. So here this is color-coded. So this Zhang, so anything with a yellow dot is alive. And as we can see, they are at the end of the timeline. So this is the current time. Species that end in the middle went extinct. So we see these lines just ending in the middle of the timeline. And we see that these shapes are different dinosaurs. Um, so these are extinct. So here's a, like a very simple uh, evolutionary tree, and it's so simple, there's no pictures or anything, we're just using letters. So the common ancestor is the species, and is an older species that branched out into two new species. So like for B and C, their common ancestor would be X, okay? This was their common ancestor. If we want to talk about a common ancestor for the entire tree, then all the letters here are related to Z. So that's how you identify a common ancestor or a common ancestor for the entire tree. A transitional species is a species that didn't necessarily go extinct, but it evolved into something else. So for instance, uh, A, a is a transitional species. It did not die out, but it continued evolving until we have another organism, organism X, which then branched off in two ways. It, it, so X itself was a transitional species and gave way to both B and C. We see this a lot. We see this a lot with... Um, with, with trees that are based on fossils, because sometimes we have fossils for transitional species. Uh, but then, and we like saw that before when I showed the cladogram with the dolphins. So that's how you identify common ancestors and transitional species. So I want to just give you a quick checkpoint to see if you can do this yourself. Can you identify the letters for the following terms? So which one here would be the common ancestor for the entire tree? Hopefully you're thinking the common ancestor for the entire tree should include everything that's here. And if we go back and back and back, we see Z is a common ancestor for everything here. Or something before Z, but that's not pictured. So Z would be the best answer for that. What is the common ancestor for species B and C? Well, just start with B and C and go back and see where they connect. And so we see X is the common ancestor for B and C. If I wanted to get really weird, like I could say, what's the common ancestor between D and B? And in order to do that, we start with them and we go back and see where they connect and they connect back as Z. Which ones are transitional species? Hopefully you will say Z, A, and X are transitional. Whereas D, B, and C are the current species. I hope this lesson was helpful. Please bring any questions you have to class. Thank you.